Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Uncle Rat and I'm going to give you my five top tips for picking the proper bug bounty target. It's not as easy as you might think, so don't zap away just yet. So the first one that I wanted to give you or we'll start at the bottom number five at this time is take your time. It's really important that you pick up your your target like you would pick a partner. You want to spend some time with it, you want to give it some quality time, you want to give it some attention, some respect and some much needed love because bug bounty targets, it's easy to rush into wanting to test but that testing isn't going to do you any good if you're picking the wrong target. If you're picking a target which you really don't like, which is not something for you, then it's not a good idea. But before you can even know that, you have to actually spend some time researching and looking into a target. And it might even be that after two or three hours of going into that target, you might not like it anymore. And that's okay. That's what I mean by take your time. You can always just say, oh, I don't like it. I spent some time in here, but I didn't like it. I'm going back looking for a new target. That was it for number five, on to number four, shall we? That one is in this case, VDP overpaid in the beginning because when you get started out, you really want to get those private invites going. You don't want to waste too much time uh, of spend on hacking on a program where you're not going to get anything like a, a giant payout program, but we'll talk more about that later. I always say VDP is a great place to start because if you're treating bug bounties as a way to get money, it's much better to treat bug bounties as a way to acquire and to actually apply your knowledge because that way, if you do that long enough, eventually the money will follow. But if you only go for the money, then you might be in for some trouble. It's not that easy to get that much consistent bug bounty money. Other videos about that, of course. Now on to number three in this case, that would be B2B over B2C. I always like business to business programs. Examples are invoicing applications, HR applications. Um, all of those business to business applications, they really bring me joy because I know that those they will contain usually a lot more functionality than a business to consumer applications. Let's say, for example, that I'm talking about a newspaper. Well, in my case, that newspaper, there's going to be not that much that I can test on it. I can create an account, that's a possibility. Um, I could possibly, besides creating an account, I could look at the subscription model, I could look at paywall bypasses if it's supported by the application. So there's many things I can do, except forget the focus on my camera, right? So let's hope this fixes it, but it's the autofocus camera. So there's not much I can do. Terribly sorry about that and about the video lag. I think it's trying to focus, but having quite a hard time. So that was it for number three. I shall move on to number two. So number two in this case is going to be Avoid big payouts. We've talked about this before and the number one problem with big payouts that they usually indicate that your target is going to be a lot more hardened than you expected because of course, like we've said before, I'm not just going to run a high giant payout if I'm not sure that my target is already secure to a certain degree. I'm not going to waste money and throw it out on the street for nothing. That's not my intention. I want to make money as a business. So that's why i say avoid high payouts of course that's only for the beginning once you feel like you have an understanding of the, of the field once you know enough web application attacks or network attacks or whatever you are working on then you can still pick up those business to consumer programs those programs that we just talked about with high payouts those paid programs those can all come when you have a little bit more experience under your belt as well um, the main application hacks, those are my number one tip, is go over main application rather than broad scope. And a lot of you guys will look up bug bounty methodology and you will find broad scope bug bounty methodologies. Well, one of my inspirations is Stuck and Stuck is more of a main application hacker. 
And he's a really awesome guy. If you guys haven't checked him out, you should check him out. His channel will be in the description below. But what he does is he also goes for the main application and broad scope is good but you need to know what you're looking for because broad scope will only give you a bunch of information and you have to be able to sift through that information and there's only one way to do that is to attack a main application and know what you're actually looking for because you can look at subdomains all day long you can take their screenshots as much as you want if you don't know exactly what you're looking for if you or if you don't have a clue what you're looking for then you're going to be in a bit of a tight spot there so thank you guys very much for watching i hope this was very helpful for you as a last recommendation i will put some integrity targets for you to hack on in the comment in the uh, in the description box below as well thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye bye amazing hackers Woo